This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. He is a number one best-selling author. He's also the host of the uh, fastest-growing podcast in the Ramsey Network called The Dr. John Deloney Show, where people call in with mental health questions, relationship questions. We'll take those today, as we always do, and we'll also take questions about your job, your career, and, oh, even your money. Andrew is going to start off this hour in Milwaukee. Hey, Andrew, what's up? Hi, Dave. Thank you for uh, taking my call. Pleasure speaking with you. You too, sir. How can we help? So my question is, I'm in the middle of my baby step two. I'm hitting it with gazelle intensity. However, I'm also in about one and a half years into my relationship. Um, both of us are, we know we want to get married. It's going to happen this year. My question is essentially, how much should I be budgeting for the engagement ring? And when do I buy the ring? Is it my next paycheck? All of that goes to the ring or is that a sinking fund? sometime within this year. The question about how much to budget, I'm basically asking because I know you typically say one month's pay. My one month's pay is very different compared to base, compared to what I'm making right now in gazelle intensity, um, getting all the overtime that I am getting. Okay. Well, congratulations. How old are you? I just turned 26 two days ago. Awesomeness, man. Well, this is fun. What a great time for you. Okay, so your range of one month's pay plus base plus hustle is what? What's the bottom end of this yeah. idea and the top end of this idea? So yearly gross um, base is 80. Okay. Um, right now, gazelle intensity, I'm taking home $3,500 every two weeks paycheck. Okay. All right. All right. So 80 to 120. Okay. Correct. And so um, what does she make? She currently um, is between 40 to 50. What's she doing? Um, she's in between jobs, but that's she was a director for a music program. Now she's looking to transition to potentially HR. So Did she'll either one of you grow up HR wealthy. Uh, no. OK. All right. Well, because there's a whole there's a whole thing, a whole lot of things that go into this. Um, the idea of one month is to give folks a guideline because the jewelry store, the retail jewelry store people will tell you three months, but that's a crock. You don't need to spend that much. Um, number two, you know, what I was trying to ascertain is expectations based on her income, how she was brought up, those kinds of things. And so, and there's all these stories and everything about rings and everything else. It's a fun time you're in for sure. And I want you guys to have fun with the whole process. And so we don't want the ring to be the center of the attention because you went nuts on one side and we don't want it to be the center of the attention because you <laughs> didn't spend enough on it either on the other side. Right. So th that's, right, a, right. that's kind of the balance I'm looking for just as a old grandpa here. Um, so if I'm in your shoes, you know, probably the $5,000 range is probably going to be fine. That'll be a, buy a pretty dad gum, nice ring. Uh, I will tell you that diamonds, having bought quite a few of them over the years, <coughs> uh, because the one I bought when I started, I had to upgrade a couple times since. But um, anyway, the uh, uh, they are completely worthless. And don't let anybody talk right. to you about an investment. The investment aspect of them is a freaking joke. The only investment is into your relationship and how she feels. Mm -hmm. Okay? But uh, I've got... I don't know. I don't even want to say how much tied up in diamonds. And I have no expectation that they're going up in value because they generally don't. It's just a crock. OK, so don't get all caught up in that. The second thing about diamonds you need to know is they're marked up as much as anything we buy. Furniture and diamonds double. They're double. OK, so when you walk into the mall jewelry store, it's double what you can get it from a diamond broker for. And so start doing some research and learning because you can get double for bang on bang for your buck and you need to learn a little bit about the purchase process uh the carrot the cut the clarity 
uh, those kinds of things and what makes a good diamond. But again, don't get all caught up in, you know, one flaw that the naked eye can't see in the thing. And so it's a it's a two instead of a one or whatever. And because uh, it's not going to matter uh, if anybody Where gets their eye the down that close to it, they don't need to be looking to learn. at it. Um, it, it's fun to learn. I, I, I would just get with uh, somebody in your life that's bought, bought some in the past and or uh, if you can find a great diamond broker in your area that will teach you a little bit, but don't get caught up in the uh, and shop around. The, the last thing is if you could really get somebody who knows how to put a glass on their eye, the best place to buy one is a pawn shop because okay. it'll be it'll be a third of what you'll find in the in the retail and you might you but you might pick you might buy a piece of glass too and not know what you're buying if you don't get somebody <laughs> right. that knows how to put a glass on their eye and, and look at it with you so, so i would be scared I, to do I that if i didn't know like the that, pawn shop owner huh a, if i don't know anyone like that a broker that's a pretty safe bet to, yeah but just but again you got to go in there like you do anything else where you're doing an investment purchase and you you're going in with finding somebody with the heart of a teacher to teach you about it Okay. Okay. And and the last thing is this. You're not going to mess this up because there's absolutely zero research between the correlation, the size of the rock, and the success of the marriage. But there is right. a lot of research right. on husbands who uh, take a knee and they propose and then they and follow it up with, and I got this at a pawn shop. <laughs> 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 hey, it depends on where, who you are hey, and man, where you If I got mine to punch up, my wife would have been so happy. That's incredible. But yeah, yeah. Other, other people wouldn't. But here, here's the thing. Um, there may right. be some inverse relationship. This as the rock is too big, the failing of the marriage is yes. predicted. But mm -hmm. because it seems to be we, we're concentrating on the wrong things here, which is the relationship versus the rock. Has she, so, has she talked to you about it? Like what she's looking for? Yeah, I mean, she she's given me her expectations, which are, I mean, she's aware of how important it is for me to get out of baby step two. So she's given me yeah, but I I don't options. Yeah. You take a month off and go do go this and do it right. But no, it's not a ten thousand dollar purchase in my mind, and it's not a one thousand dollar purchase. Okay, so pause baby step two to build up five thousand dollars based on what I'm making, and then buy it, resume baby step two. That's what I. There would you do. go. And here's the thing: I, I know a lot of guys that will have this conversation with the person that they're going to get engaged to. And then the person tells them, Hey, this is what I would love. This is kind of what the kind of band I would like. And the guy goes rogue because he thinks, Oh, actually I'm going to get. And so, man, if she's honorable enough to tell you, then listen, listen, man, this is, this is test number yeah. one for many, many tests to mm -hmm. come over the years. Yeah. Just listen. I, I'll just tell you, I don't buy them anymore at all. Unless Sharon does the design. She does. My wife does not do surprises. <laughs> is she not happy with the surprise? <laughs> because I'm always wrong. Right. So I just, just I, that's I, what she's I, she's no. not she loves I mean, surprises. She doesn't I, like it when other, you're wrong. Other ladies like it. They like the they like the you put time and effort into it and so forth. But I, I've made that mistake a couple times and I'll never do it again. So no, we don't buy anything right. shiny without Sharon actually approving, being in on it. So you could go that route if you want to go really crazy. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Building wealth is a really hot topic right now. It's all over your social media. It's jamming up your email inbox. It's on the talk shows and podcasts, the late night news. Everyone's got an opinion on how to get rich quick. And how crypto or single stocks or zero down real estate, gold, whatever is the way to do it. Oh, and throw in inflation for a big dose of fear on top of your FOMO, right? So in January, we had a huge sold out event here in Nashville called Wealth Building Live. And we talked about how to build wealth, real wealth. It was incredible. The energy in the room was amazing. And it's so awesome that we want to do it again. So we're hitting the road. We're going to get out there. We're going to meet you guys in person. That's right. The Building Wealth Live event will be on tour in cities across the country this year. The first city on our tour is Orlando. So get ready, Orlando. Join me, Rachel Cruz, George Camel, when Building Wealth Live comes to you May 19th. Also, John Deloney and Ken Coleman will be along with us. We'll be doing some stuff with them as well. Tickets start at just $25, or you can get a four-pack for only 60 bucks. That way you can sign up and bring your friends. That's a good idea. That's a deal. Come on, guys. I mean, seriously. Be sure to sign up for one of these uh, one-night special events, and we'll give you the real story on the quickest, fastest, most sure way to build wealth. RamseySolutions.com slash events to buy tickets now. Orlando is on sale now. Ready, set, go. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, new promos all the time. You'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY, and you'll have the best deal. Today's question comes from James in Alabama. James writes, I'm in an embarrassing situation. I'm 36 years old, and I'm a hoarder. I have over $50,000 invested into video games, comics, and toys. This is consuming the home that my mother and I live in, which is making her unhappy. I have about $15,000 in debt and earn about thirty-five grand a year. I'm really starting to wake up after watching your show, and I've been thinking about selling 99% of my stuff and living a simpler life. I just feel lost in the process, and I have trouble letting things go. How can I change my mindset about these things I've collected? Whew, this is tough. Um, Dave, this is one of those challenges that people start trying to solve the the immediate pros- the immediate problem right in front of them. And you can do that, but something that is going on in James' life, I'm going to guess, is deep-seated that he needs to go do some hard work. He's 36, still living at home. He's packed up stuff. He's, he's running and hiding. This is a person who's very anxious. Um, and it's probably got some childhood trauma that he's dealing with. So when I feel people get in this situation, I just can't break three. I can't break. I can't break. This person needs to go sit down and so talk to somebody. So the hoarding is the symptom, not the problem. Correct. Right. It is usually um, a response. It, it almost always is, actually. Some sort of ang- anxiousness or, or trauma response. Yeah. I've had some stuff go on, and I just start collecting and collecting and collecting, and I don't want to let go because I might need it. It's preparatory, and all of a sudden, you look up, and you can't move in your home, right? And this guy's- Distinguish for me, uh, because I've got this friend (laughs) 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 who who might be a little bit OCD, and uh, he's got collections of things. I have a collection of water skis. I have a collection of um, wine. I have a collection of guns. I have a collection of whatever, right? And um, those things are things I got drawn into, and usually the community around them um, and that they represent and or the memory or something. Um, and so I just enjoyed the process. And they and they sometimes, not all of them, but some things run their course. Right. Like I, I used to buy a lot more guns than I buy now, yeah. but I've kind of got the – I'm kind of full. So yeah. I haven't bought any, a bunch of guns. I don't buy – Anywhere near the volume I used to. Uh, so I kind of ran its course, so to speak. But that's a co- what's the difference in a collector and a hoarder? Uh, I would suggest a collector is somebody, like you said, that has a good community. This is something you do. This is something you enjoy. That thing that you're buying doesn't own you, right? Okay. And All so right. I c- get a paycheck. I can't not go buy this thing. Like, okay. It's an addiction. I see. Right? Okay. And if I said if, – if Sharon came to you and said – we have to sell some of these guns. Yeah. Your initial response is, I can't do that. Oh, I see. Not an intellectual argument, not a, not a well, why would we do that? It's, I, I can't part with this. And so you can look at somebody's house who's a hoarder and say, throw it away. Mm-hmm. You're asking them to peel back layers of security that they've 
walls that they've built literally. I see. Okay. And so this starts with man. The so fact there's even a di- even a difference between someone who's a very aggressive. Um, because I'm, I can remember like times I've been in a zone like I I, I got on a hunt for that thing. Yeah. Because to complete the collection. You're a hunter. Yes. You know? Yeah. And I enjoyed that part of it, but that's different than I can't live without it spiritually. And you also did it differently when you had resources and finances, and when you didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very, very small percentage of the world. Of so. your net worth, right. Yeah, so. It's not like you made... Okay, some, I'm feeling better because like I was kind of worried. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever need to unload some of your wine or guns or bourbon, <laughs> you holler at me, and uh, I know a guy. But, so James, here's the thing. Um, I want you to reach out to a friend, reach out to a pastor in your community that you trust, a counselor, reach out to somebody and say, I'm ready to get well. And this yeah. is going to be hard. And you're going to have some stuff you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to go back and revisit some stuff that's going on in your life. But the fact that you're ready is so good, man. It's hard to get people here. It feels like if you if he were to come up under this and start getting well, the result would be the release of it these things. It can be that you just start it shedding stuff. Be the, it wouldn't be as much of a tearing. Right. It feels like right now there'd be a, a ripping sound, a tearing sound. And when that happens, is what happens. You, you'll find somewhere else to plug this. So yeah. you can hire a crew to come clean your house out, throw everything away, and that addiction will just jump to something else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The problem is still is still under there. That's right. Somewhere. That's right. So, but good for you, James. Yeah. And you know, here's the other thing. I've I've bought real estate uh-huh. from people that were hoarders. Yes. And um, tremendous problem. Uh, even getting inside to see the house on the inside, the shame yeah. from a true hoarder, someone they know. who's really dealing they with a psychological issue to that, yeah. the shame around it is unbelievable. You just pull, uh, called something that's important. A lot of people think I'm a hoarder, and then you go to somebody's home who's a true hoarder, and you go, oh, oh I'm it's not trash. That. It's right? completely, I mean, stuck Magazines smells. Magazines to the ceiling. Smells bad. That's always right, smells yeah. bad. It's always yeah. nasty. It's uh, it's animals. It's, it's, it's oh, different. Oh, it's gross. It's, it's different. So yeah. gross. Yeah. Yeah. I bought houses like that, and we had to, you know, entire dumpsters outside right. after the, you know, maybe even the hoarder had passed away, and we That's bought right. it from the estate yep. and gone in and cleaned it out. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's mind blowing when you go in there. So anytime you're about identity change, it starts with looking in the mirror and saying, "I'm worth more than this," and let's start the healing there. But good for you, James. I'm proud of you, brother. Yeah. Um, very good stuff. Very good. It's good, stuff. man. Yeah, that's very smart to recognize that. And here's the other thing he did really good that I think is a sign for his healing is he put numbers around this and he started recognizing they were out of balance because he put them in the email. He did two things that were great. I make 35, I got 50, and I, uh, and I owe 15. Yep. I heard the three numbers. And I want to sell 99% of this stuff. I, yeah, so he did two things. He put numbers around it and he took full responsibility. Yeah. He didn't say, I have this because of the... He said, yeah. this is on me, and i got to make some changes. Where do I start? Yeah. And this starts with saying stuff out loud to somebody else. But still, once he de- even though he's, that, that's a really good first li- rung on the ladder. That's he's right. still got to get up under it. Otherwise, it's going to just – his parts of his heart are going to leave. That's, a, and that's he needs it. To, he needs to detach from the heart before the stuff leaves. That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. That's, that's a great way to put that. Wow. This isn't that's, a matter of just throwing stuff away. And, you know, in America, we've all got, just about everybody's got stuff-itis of some kind. If what's, I get that, if I get, if, I'll be happy if I could just get that car. I'll be the, happy if I could buy those The billions and billions of dollars that we have in storage, what is it, billion square oh, foot billions, of storage billions. space? Yeah, I don't know. It's ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, we spend more on storing stuff than most countries' GDP. <sighs> that's yeah. bonkers, man. Stuff that we don't use. Yeah. We're the only country in the world that when someone moves, they have a box labeled seldom used kitchen items. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah. I've got a. I I'll be happy when As I'll be happy. I when. get that thing from Ronco. That's the big difference. The two sets of knives. Can you be happy without that gun? Can yeah. you be happy without that car? Would it be cool and nice? Of course it would. Will I still be worth being loved if I don't have that? Yes. Yeah, I quit buying cars for other people a long time ago. That's that. Well, that's I one of the things that. going broke. I, I still got really nice cars. Or again, I got really nice cars, but they're for me. I love that. Just because I like driving it. And I don't really care whether you like it or not. Because I like it. Yeah. That, that's a whole different thing I than I used to do that. in my 20s. Whole different thing. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. 
That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. Ramsey personality is my co-host today here on the Ramsey Show in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the Debt Free Stage. Zach and Becky are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Great. Hey. How are you? Better than I deserve. <laughs> Where do you guys live? Uh, Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo, North Dakota. It's a bit of a haul to Nashville. Just a little bit. Whew. Did you drive or fly? We flew. Flew. Down. I guess. I hope so. <laughs> my goodness. Gracious. How cold is it there right now? I don't want to know. <laughs> that is a great yeah, answer. Says the guy in shorts in Tennessee. <laughs> All right, I like it. All right. How much debt did you guys pay off? 170000 Very Whoa. good. How long did this take? Mm, four and a half years or so. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Forty-five to 105 Oh, nice jump. Okay, cool. What do y'all do for a living? I stay at home with the girls and Zach flies. Fly. You're a pilot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do a uh, small cargo uh, company fly UPS freight okay. under contract. Very cool. Oh, I thought Good you were a superhero. You. That's fantastic. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, this is worth the cape. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, 170 thousand in debt was what? Car and student loans. Whoa, Sally yeah. Mae got a big chunk, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Flight school. Oh, uh, flight school. Ah, school. there it is. All yeah. right. Well, she still had to be kicked out. Yeah. Yes. Ugly woman didn't need her own bedroom in your house. <laughs> All right. I like it. Way to go, you guys. How long you been married? Five and a half years. Okay. So one year into marriage, you decide to go gangbuster on this. Tell us about what happened. Um, during our like marriage prep course, we um, had a financial um, teacher, I guess, during our like weekend retreat okay. thing, whatever. And it happened to be one of Zach's professors that he looked up to. So it was like, we already kind of know his story. and Yeah. So he shared his story <clears throat> and we kind of thought it was really cool and we kind of dropped it after that for a little bit and then so he kind of uh, had a ramsey story or what? Yeah. oh yeah okay. he yep. did the whole thing and he's oh, okay. yep. recommended your total money makeover book and, okay um, and you did none of it immediately correct yep. yeah right because we were still in school you know there's not so much we can do you know yeah. what we thought right. and what okay. student listens to the professor exactly. exactly you know it takes like six months to brew you That's know right. okay yeah. so you're married yes a year in what woke you up what was like oh god we got to do this um, it was like a couple months after we got married, we read the book together. Oh. Um, and then just started knocking them out. Um, the first year we were pretty strong. And then, um, I was teaching at the time. Um, we got pregnant. We thought you can't do this when you're pregnant, you know? So we kind of laid back a little bit, went Davish. Um, we ended up moving to Sioux Falls, South Dakota for six months. <laughs> I stopped teaching cause I stayed at home with the, um, our oldest daughter, Abby. And Zach started at this current job he has now, but like a lower s lo salary, lower on the totem, and, yeah, yeah, lower on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. um, we moved back up to Fargo because there was a better opportunity with the job. Um, now he's kind of like the head guy of Fargo, so that's cool. Um, bumped up our salary, had another kid in the midst, um, and just kept working on our salary. Yeah, mm -hmm. and her brother met with uh, some smart investor pros in Iowa, and we're like, oh, well, we should look into that, too. And So stopped the, like, Dave-ish and went gazelle intense. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, finally so figured it out. So babies the, and moves, we turned the heat up and down. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And exactly. finally turned the heat up and knocked right. it out. So then after we met with um, Tana, our smart investor pro, um, she kind of kicked us in the pants and... <laughs> Had us set a goal, and we actually knocked that goal out of the water. 
All right. There we go. Fantastic. Game on. Hey, I like it. You got there. Yeah. 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 You got there. I like it. It's a good, and that's a real story. That's not somebody that's too fake to be believed. Y'all really did this. Yeah. Yeah. The last like year we paid um, over a hundred thousand. It was a year and a half, I guess. Over a hundred thousand. So So the vast majority of it just lately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So I've met with a lot of students over the years and they look at a number this high and they kind of just quit. Yeah. Like that number's high. And yeah. y'all chipped away at it for three years. How'd you keep from getting frustrated and just killing each other? <laughs> um, I mean, we were kind of our biggest. We're just killing him. It was his <laughs> day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take the blame the on show. that one. No one would have ever found him, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of, you know, we wanted to see the loan number go down and our money in our pocket go up. Mm. Right. Um, Change the family tree for our girls. So yeah. give them something to look forward to instead of just a mountain of debt um so that was kind of the big motivating factor and we just wanted to live our lives instead of paying out to the banks so have you had that moment where you've paid off everything and your check is deposited and you get to keep all of that have yes you had that yeah. so now it's going towards our house well we had finished our six-month emergency fund so now it's just saving for a house that we don't have right now so it's just there's a lot yeah. like shifting the intensity to yeah getting now, rid of our well money now cars. it's to get something you want instead of getting right. rid of something you hate right yeah, right. yeah. Right. that's oh, that's more that's fun yeah yes. it is yeah yeah good that's for awesome. you guys well done I'm proud of you what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is um, stick to a budget um, we didn't have beans and rice necessarily but off-brand mac and cheese is really good <laughs> yeah 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 I'm with you <laughs> all right uh, but, yeah sticking to the budget you know. Just keeping an eye on all the little purchases and right, the it little, all adds up. Yep, the little things make a big difference. Um, we sold a lot of stuff on like Facebook Marketplace. Um, raising our incomes acted DoorDash for a while. Mm-hmm. So any little thing helps. Yeah. So what do you tell people the key? Okay, at the 18-month mark, you met with the Smart Investor Pro, you set a goal, and that's when the intensity kicked in. Yeah. And you never let up at, during that 18 months and did most of the work during that time. Right. Yes. What do you tell people that key was? Um... What was it that all of a sudden went, okay, fire on, yeah. we're doing this? I think we were just tired of like being the Dave-ish and like it's not really going away very fast. You know, we just really need to keep up with the intensity. Um, I think it was Tana that had suggested like writing down our um, debt That's- snowball and putting it on the fridge so you see it all the time. And uh-huh. that didn't really affect him so much, but it was like in my face all day long since I stayed at home with the girls. Uh. Um, so, and then just having all sorts of like charts and stuff that you can color in or whatever it was helpful for me yeah anything visual yes that's yeah. helpful yeah visual is very motivating yes and, and is it true that your kids will survive if they don't have everything that they wish yeah, yeah. you know they don't agree with that <laughs> of course you know, at the time but you know you have to learn how to say no when you're at the grocery store and they want you know yeah. all the fancy cereals that are garbage for you anyway so it's there actually go. gotten to the point we we're gonna go out to eat one night <laughs> and our older daughter she's like well we can't go out to eat we have to save for buying a house yeah oh, we, oh. Yeah. So we were like well we have gift cards for that because we have <laughs> gift cards from christmas you know so no, like, mom, it's no. Okay. put the box back now we're we have, rationalizing to the six-year-old yeah. yeah we have cereal out of the bag mommy yeah, yeah, yeah. Way to go. and she's three and a half and she's like we can't have chick-fil-a we don't have money for that we have to save for a house <laughs> oh good that's oh, perfect that's great. so perfect yeah. oh that's good she's well, gonna be listening to my show in a few years that's fantastic yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way to go you guys we're very proud of you very okay. impressive who were your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you um our girls yeah. i guess if it's outside the two of us yeah, yeah. and her brother was a pretty big supporter too what um, about the professor did he just oh yeah, he was yep, and him and tana and, yeah, yeah we just yep. didn't see him as often since we left grand forks after that so. oh i yep. see yeah okay does he know you did all this now yes yep. he's watching right now oh, i think that's so, good. Yeah. Yeah. what's his name uh dan malott all right we'll give him a shout out very good <laughs> thanks dan all right very and cool. tana now, this is a life that was changed right here. Well done. I love it, guys. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story, how ordinary people built extraordinary wealth, how you can too. It's a number one bestseller and our gift to you. Another number one bestseller, Total Money Makeover. We're going to give you one of those, and you can give it away to somebody and disturb them the way uh, the way Prof did for you. That will be good stuff. So well done, you two. Very well done. Zach and Becky, Fargo, North Dakota, $170,000 paid off in four. Four and a half years, most of it in the last 18 months, making 45 to 105. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt free. free! Yeah! yeah! What a great couple. $175,000 is a tall 
mountain that's to climb. That's a big old mountain, yeah. It's a big mountain to climb. And most of it's student loans. I mean, and that's uh, that's the big topic out there, that it can't be done. It can't be done. Yes, right. it can. It can. Yes, it can. Zach and Becky from Fargo, North Dakota, just did a mic drop. Yes, it can be done. They did it. And uh, they're walking social proof that you can, too. So You could do it when you're pregnant. You could do it with your, a kid. You can do it while you're renting. You can do it when you're trading jobs. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Well, it's just a matter of, uh, it has to be front. And I like the front and center thing with the visual. Yeah. That just gets in your face, messes with you, constantly reminding you. It's very, very good. It's very good stuff. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Drake is with us in Kansas City. Hi, Drake. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, <clears throat> pretty much I was lucky enough to live with the best dad uh, anybody could ever ask for. Um, best friend growing up, all of that. Uh, long story short, he passed away a few years ago and left me a pretty good chunk uh, of money. Um, it, it's in a trust fund right now. Uh, I won't see any of it until I'm 25 years old. Uh, I'm a college student right now. I'm 22. So I've got about three years left to go. Uh, basically I, I have a few ideas of kind of what I should do and how I should save it, uh, investments like real estate and stuff like that down the road. Um, but pretty much I just wanted to see kind of if you were me or if you were in my shoes, what, what were what would be some things you would do with a big chunk like this? How much is it? Um, I've got about 550000 in the 401k, uh, and then about 438 in cash. And I've got about mm, 18000 18, of my own right now that I have access to. Okay. And you're 22. How old was he? Uh, he was... 53 when he passed away. Wow. So, what happened? Yeah. Um, sadly, it was a uh, terminal disease, um, Lou Gehrig's disease. So oh, it was, no. yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, pretty I'm rough. Sorry, man. Yeah, I'm sorry, but, for um, what you, sorry for what yeah. you've been through. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. But, a, uh, yeah, a couple so, of things. I mean, I mean, more than anything, you just need some principles to guide you. Okay. Instead okay. of specific tactics, let me give you some principles. Number one sure. principle, go slow. There's no reason to be fast. Number two, don't put money in anything you don't understand. Just because somebody says it, they know this or they know that, or you read an article on the Internet, God help you, don't do that. Um, or because even Dave Ramsey said to do it, don't do it. You don't put money in something unless you understand it. If you understand right. it, you can learn from people like me to where you understand it, then you can go forward. But just because it's shiny and flashy and cool and the cool kids are all doing it does not mean you put money in it. As a matter of fact, that usually means you don't. Um, the other right. thing you can remember is this. Having studied wealthy people for the past 30 years, I find that their investing strategies are, by and large, very boring. They're not super uber sophisticated they don't do, uh, you know, limited family partnership, double backflips. There's no weird stuff. All these things you hear that the rich have secrets, they really don't. They go slow. They know what they put money in. They understand it. They don't put money in something unless they understand it, and therefore they don't lose it, and it generally makes some money. But they're not trying to hit the home run every time. They're just trying to make money on their money, just steady. 
Right. And so uh, it doesn't matter what you put money in as long as you understand it and you know, you know what it is and you do it. So, um, you know, so I know a lot about real estate. I grew up in the real estate business. My parents were in the business when I was a kid. I got my license when I turned 18. I'm very, very comfortable with real estate. Consequently, I have a bunch of it. Okay. Right. But someone who's scared yeah. to death and has never done it or never dealt with a tenant, you would want to go super, super slow, test it a little bit, test it a little bit, test it a little bit. It's second nature for me, though. Okay. Uh, right. Same thing with mutual funds. I, I really do not have any investments personally except mutual funds and real estate. That's all I have. Okay. Because I got really comfortable with it. doesn't have to be sexy or cool. If the cool kids don't like it, I don't really care. I'm not investing for them. Right. You know, yeah, Dave Ramsey that's, that's doesn't understand. Thing. Dave Ramsey's got several hundred million dollars. Dave Ramsey understands something. Okay. All right. So, um, right. you know, that that's just, you know, that that's, but that's what I find when I talk to, you know, uh, you know, you're, the person you're talking to, if they've got a little gray hair, it's probably a good idea. Uh, because I, I was young and rich and lost everything. I didn't want his opinion when I started surveying people about how money works because he was an idiot. He lost everything. That's me I'm talking about. So, but I did, I did high right. leverage, get rich quick real estate and it bit me in the butt, uh, because I violated a lot of common sense rules. So all of that to say, do that. The last thing I'll tell you is this in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And so if I were a 25 year old millionaire, sudden, sudden millionaire, I would uh, build a board of directors for my life. Not that tells me what to do, a board of advisors. I'd have a high quality insurance broker, an estate planner, a tax attorney, an investment broker, all that I can call and speak to about taxes, about insurance, about real estate, a good real estate person. I'd have a little collection of people that, that I, I, you don't necessarily have to call them all together at any time, but they need to, um, they're there to advise you with the heart of a teacher. They're not there to tell you what to do. Uh, they're not there to be arrogant and act like they have their God's gift to whatever. Um, the uh, if you get if you sense that arrogance, run from them. Uh, but get some teachers in your corner because you have to go slow and you have to invest only in things you don't understand. And the one thing you do understand. The one thing I'd add, Dave, is I didn't understand this until I got older and started having money. Don't. Don't use this money to leverage this money to go get some more. Yeah. Um, the, the number of folks who said, hey, you want to put 10 in on this or 25 in on this or, hey, we're all going in to buy this apartment. You want to put 50 in on this? They they like me as a friend, but what they really want is my money to make their picture of what they want to do come true. And it's easy to take that money and to think you can parse it out and make a bunch of people happy and make a bunch of money over it. You end up spreading it all out and you end up way, you, you can lose that money quick. Yeah, right. I, 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 the only ship won't sell is a partnership. I'm not in any partnerships. Right. I own it, or I'm not in it. It's okay, yeah. and that means I got lots of friends that do all kinds of stuff like that, but I don't. I don't do it. I'm yeah. just my life is low drama, very low drama. Right. It's just downright boring, <laughs> you know. And I, I kind of like it. I that like way. it that way. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a, it was intentional. <laughs> Max is in Canada. Hey, Max. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me try again. There he is. Max is in Canada. What's up, Max? Hi, how are you doing, sir? Great. How can we help? Great. Um, I'm going to try and be as straight and transformed as I possibly can. Um, I'll just give you a little overview first. Right now, I'm just finishing up my last year of university. Um, I'm graduating this May. Um, I have enough funds to be able to pay off my student loans, which I've done, as well as 10000 for my um, initial starting emergency fund, I guess, for six months. Way to go. Um, yeah, the one thing I wanted to throw in, too, is I read Ken's Proximity Principle book this summer, and it was an absolute game changer. So if there's any other university students watching or anything, I'd highly recommend that book. My question for you today is I've been able to land a full-time job that I'm going to be starting this summer after graduation. The company currently does not offer anything in terms of retirement matching, and I'm kind of looking at my different retirement op um, options. I know that you recommend about 15%. So I'm looking here in Canada, we have a TFSA, which is similar to a Roth IRA, um, but that's not a traditional retirement account. How this one works is I can put in $6,000 per year and that money grows tax-free. I'm wondering when it comes to retirement, would it make more sense to max that out first before putting money into a traditional retirement account? Uh, we tell folks stateside to do Roth before they do traditional because it grows tax-free. 
And if I'm understanding what you just presented to me, I'm not an expert on Canadian retirement plans. Okay, but if I understand what you just said, this is more of a Roth. It's six thousand and it grows tax free. The traditional grows uh, after tax, and uh, I mean it's, an, it's a pre-tax investment, and it grows with taxation on the whole account. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's just like our planned state side, the way you described it. It's a traditional versus a Roth. So we always tell people to do a Roth first um, because the tax-free growth is going to be a, it's going to amount to a whole lot more than than the obviously the after-tax effect of the other other account. So pretty simple. Sounds like you really got this on the run, Max. Way to go! And to all the parents out there with little kids, I want you to imagine fifteen, twenty years from now. Your kids in the last semester of college. Do you want them to have a conversation like he just had? How do I start investing my money after I've got my emergency fund? Or do you want them to be making a phone call saying, how do I pay all this student loan stuff off? And that starts when your kids are really young with some decisions you make, conversations you have as parents. Have those conversations. Have a plan. There we go. Nicely done. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where dad is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life, your money, your mental health, your relationships, your job, your career. All of it's on the line right here at The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us. Logan is going to start off this hour in Dayton, Ohio. Hey, Logan, what's up? Hey, Dave, John, how y'all doing? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Uh, it's an honor to be on the show. I'll get uh, right to it. Um, so I've been watching your YouTube videos online for about two weeks now. Kind of a really strange way to end up finding it, but I'm very thankful that I did. Uh, my parents taught me a lot about finances growing up. So thankfully, uh, where I'm at in life, I'm actually on baby step six. I'm 24 years old. Uh, wow. I have a mortgage now uh, with my house in Dayton, Ohio, and I had a question regarding it. Um, so. Uh, again, I started watching two weeks ago, uh, so I'll let, you know some of the decisions I've made not quite in line. Um, but I got a house in November on a 30-year VA mortgage. Um, so right now I have it financed for $161,000. Um, I have my emergency savings all up, uh, everything like that's good. Um, but I have $35,000. That is in uh, mutual funds that my parents set up for me for college. Um, I'm in the military, so our college is paid for, thankfully. Um, so trying to find out what I want to do with that. Um, I'm looking at being here between three and five years in Dayton. Um, so in talking with my parents, a little bit of confusion and trying to figure out what will be the best option. Uh, is it to put that money you know, onto the principal and just try to, try to knock that down as quick as possible? Or keep it in like a mutual funds because it is it is growing pretty decently in there. Mm. Well, thank you for your service. Oh, absolutely, my my pleasure. What do you do in the military? Uh, so I'm in the Air Force. Uh, I work. Uh, easiest way to describe would be like military police, so base security. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Good for you. Very nice. Thank you. Well. Um, our normal process is we try to determine what the shortest distance between where you are right now and wealthy is. What's the shortest distance? Okay. Mm -hmm. And having studied wealthy people and people that built wealth for 30 years and lots of data on the subject, 
Uh, we have found that the first one to five million dollars in net worth that people get generally comes from two areas: um, the, uh, the 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 wonderful built-up retirement plan, in your case, the TSP, um, and uh, and a paid-for house. Those are the two things okay. that we talk to the typical millionaire with their first one to five million dollars of net worth is usually their paid-for home and their retirement accounts, their Roth IRAs and their 401ks and that kind of stuff. And that's where it is. And so uh, you can try to get there other ways, but we find very few people that do. Uh, I, I don't, I, you know, the number of millionaires that we talked to and we studied 10,000 of them that said, uh, I borrowed money on my house and put it into the stock market because the stock market was doing really good and that made me a millionaire was really close to zero. Hardly any of them did. Uh, everybody talks about that, and a lot of um, bad financial advisors recommend that. But it, in real practice, actually finding wealthy people who really did it, there's not many of them. And so uh, that's what I go with. I say, let's get the house paid off, and let's build up your retirement accounts. Now, you're going to be moving, but the good news about paying that 35000 down on your principal is when you sell your house, they're going to give you a check for the equity. It's not like you spent the money. You just moved it over onto mm -hmm. the house. Your net worth doesn't change. Right? Okay. So, yeah, that way, you know, whenever I do move, you know, that's just going to the equity and I'll be able to pull that. Yeah, and be sure, be sure you sell the house when you leave. Don't have long-distance landlording mm -hmm. everywhere you get stationed. You end up with a house and a rental property, and you end up with 17 rental properties in 17 places you were stationed over the last 30 years or something in the military career. But don't do that. That's a disaster. Um, but... So sell it when you leave, and then you may even rent, depending on how far, how long you're going to be in the next place. But um, just, just again, don't go with what the, they said and I heard. They're the worst financial planners on the planet. <laughs> Everybody's got a dead gum opinion. They're the worst mental health practitioners, the worst marriage counselors, the worst pet owners. It's like you know the current version of going to the old. Old school barber shop, yep. like Floyd's on maybe RFD, right? And you sit around with a bunch of old men, and they're all going to tell you how to do something yep. that they don't know how to do. Yep. And the current version of that's Googling it. Except that that, that <laughs> except that, that barber shop had some... Common sense. Th well, they, they looked at the guy down the way and said, you're an idiot. You don't tell that boy that. And then they would say, no, you don't tell... There was... You could hear it back and forth. Google tells you exactly what you want to hear. Yeah. And, yeah, if, if, you're, if you get sick, the last thing you need to do is Google it. Because <sighs> it will scare you. Because you're dead. It, always, you're, you're dying of you're whatever dead. it is. <laughs> you're dead. And there's also a natural uh, homeopathic... Answer for whatever you've <laughs> got. Right. Essential oils. Death essential and essential oils. Death, essential oils, Special and homeopath candles. homeopathic witch doctors. Yeah, I mean, there's every. It's something uh, everywhere, man. Dave, it's, the it's letters just, we're going to get all by the essential I oil people. I don't really care. I mean, it's just, it's okay if you want to do those things. They're going to they're they're poke pins in a doll. But the, uh, but, but the, you know, You're the, you can do it, whatever man. you want to do. But, but the thing is, yeah, so that, that's it. They said and I heard. Don't, you know, when broke people are giving you financial <laughs> advice, run. Oh, we're dead. It's a good rule right there. Run! <laughs> David's in San Antonio. Hi, David. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How are you doing? Great, man. What's up? Hey, uh, my wife and I are in a bit of a conundrum. We don't know what to do, and we're hoping for some guidance. We, seven years ago, purchased our dream home and built it, and then life happened, and I got a job across town, and we got another home, and we didn't sell the dream home. We continue to rent it. It's been a rental for about four years now. Um, our primary home, we owe 370 on and our rental home, we owe 320 and our tenant has been in that house for two years is requesting to purchase it for fair market value. We got a CMA done and she's willing to give us that market, the, the CMA price. How much? And also willing to not use How realtors, much? uh, 480. Okay, so you got a hundred grand coming your way. Uh, after taxes and everything, our tax guy said we'd looking at about one thirty. Okay, all right, good. And the deal is, the wife wants to sell and put a hundred and twenty or hundred and thirty down on the house, our primary home, and recast the loan and save some money. I am looking at wanting to continue running it and hoping I can sell it for. 200 or 250 or 300 grand profit. 
What's your household income? About 170. Okay. If you're going to keep it, develop a plan to pay it and your home off within five or six years. Let's get with it. Okay. Get it cleaned up. If you're if you're going to sell it, you don't need to recast your mortgage. Just throw the debt, throw it at the mortgage, and then let's get your mortgage paid off as soon as possible, and then save up and pay cash for the next rental. Because this didn't become a rental by plan; it was by default. You did not buy this house to be a rental. You ended up with it being a rental. So is it a good rental? I don't know. You can decide that. But if you're going to keep them, you got to get them paid off now. Get with it. Life is full of firsts. and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. personality is my co-host today. Mataya is with, oh, no, it's Darcy's up. I'm sorry, Mataya, you're up next. Uh, Darcy's up in Washington, D.C. Hi, Darcy, how are you? Hi, I am so excited to be speaking to you guys. Thank you guys so much for your help. Sure, what's up? Um, okay, I'll make a long story short here. I am 33 years old. I am not married. I have no kids. I'm in baby steps four and six. And my question is, what should I do with an extra $2,000 to hit my 15% retirement goal if I can't do a backdoor Roth due to the pro rata rule? So you got an aggregation problem. You got too much in the in the traditional? I do. I have about 80K in a traditional IRA. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can just drop it into a mutual fund. I mean, that's all you need to do. The point is just to try to get make sure you're saving into something. Uh, what I do in non-retirement mutual fund investing is I invest in what's called a low turnover mutual fund, which means they don't sell the stocks inside the mutual fund very often, and um, uh, hardly at all. Like a 5% turnover ratio would be called a low turnover mutual fund. A good example of that is just an S&P 500 fund. Uh, your SmartVestor Pro can hook you up with one, or you can just go buy a smart buy a buy a S and P 500 somewhere. They're no non commission, no brainer. You know, you don't have to, there's nothing to it. You just buy it and hold it, uh, because it, as the money grows, you don't pay taxes on it. Uh, like a like a rental property, you don't pay taxes on the value increasing until you sell it. So if you're churning inside that fund all the time, you're always paying taxes on that sale? Exactly. Uh, okay. And if they if they buy and hold the stocks inside the fund and you hold the fund, then you've got capital gains growth, Okay. meaning you don't pay taxes on it until you sell it. So uh, what, you just mentioned the aggregation. I, I didn't understand half the words you used. What does that mean? <laughs> What's that mean? Okay. That's a rule that the IRS has that does not allow a Roth IRA or backdoor Roth IRA if you have a large as a percentage of your world, a large traditional uh, IRA. Okay. So another thing you could do, you could start to move some of that traditional over to Roth and pay the taxes on it. Uh, that would have the same effect. But I really wouldn't do that until you got your house paid off. I think you're probably just putting some money in mutual fund. will make it easy enough. Matea is with us in Eugene, Oregon. Hi, Matea. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? All right, so I am uh, 18 years old. I uh, recently live on my own. Um, I have an income, but it, the majority of that goes to paying all of these financial bills I now have. Um, I am currently in college and about to graduate with my associates. Um, but because of <clears throat> all the recent events, I, I don't have the money to pay for college, and I don't want to just stop going until I have the money because I'm so close. So kind of hoping for some guidance. 
this sounds like you suddenly left home. I did, yes. Why? Um, I had a, a very bad living situation um, with my, my parents um, at home, and I needed to get out. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you safe now? I am. Yes. No, I, I live on my own. Um, no one knows where I live, so <laughs> it's kind of nice. Okay. That's not a bad thing. Um, yeah. well, it is a bad thing that you've had to go through this, but I mean, it's, it's a good thing that nobody knows. So, uh, yeah. what do you make? I make um, an average of sixteen hundred a month um, between two jobs. Um, on a good month, it can be like eighteen or nineteen hundred. What do you do? Um, I am a part-time nanny and part-time barista. Okay. What are you going to school for? Um, general studies, but um, focused in psychology. Okay. And you're almost through with your associates? Yes, I am. Okay. Is Have you got the money to finish that? I do not know. I am okay. almost as in like I could. It, it's so it's a long associates because I started when I was pretty young and I didn't take a full load of classes. Um, so I I would say like by fall term I would be graduated. Okay. All right. Okay. Here, rule number one is not college. Rule number one is mm-hmm. existence, sustainability, mm-hmm. food, shelter, clothing, transportation, utilities. In the eighth grade, mm-hmm. when I was in school, we called that necessities. Okay, mm-hmm. and so that's the that's the main thing you have to do right there. Until you get that done, we don't think about the other. And if you delay college, whoop de doop you're 18, you're safe, you got time, you'll get there. But your big thing is safety and security, meaning that you have a place to live, you have food, you have the lights on. Okay, because mm-hmm. what you're going through is very scary. I mean, uh, albeit terrifying. Am I oh, wrong? No. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Yeah, and so let, let's just pretend for a second. Uh, the way I, the way I, my my brains work is, if we could get your income from sixteen hundred to three thousand, and you didn't go to school, I think you could breathe a little better. And then let's start mm-hmm. talking about how we get back to school. Okay. Does that, does it, I mean, what if you made $4,000 in a month, but you didn't go to school? You'd feel better than being terrified and going to school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we're not going to do that as a permanent way of life. I believe in education, and I want you to have a, a track that you're on to have a career that's not a barista. Okay, a long term. You don't want to be a 48-year-old barista. You want to move on. You want to have a career, right? Uh, you want to become you know, whatever it is you want to become. And I want you to get there, but I want to do that from a place of strength, not a strength of, not a place of terror. John? Yeah. Can I, yeah, can I, can, I uh, Matea, can I be real yeah. honest with you? Yes. What you've done so far is very brave. And few people have the strength and bravery to do what you did, which is to keep yourself safe, even though it meant going off on your own. And this mm-hmm. is a moment when people in your situation bury themselves in short-term decisions that will haunt you for years and years and years. Okay. So hear me say, commit now. I will not borrow money. I will no longer be trapped by anybody. And you just escaped one situation. Don't jump into another thing. Okay. You are 18 about to finish your associates. Do you real? you're two years ahead of everybody. Okay, <laughs> so slow down and become safe. Become safe. You, honey, are worth more than sixteen hundred dollars a month. You just are. Mm-hmm. You work hard. You're so far ahead. I can tell you're a hard worker. You're brave. You're strong. You can do really hard stuff. I want to see you get a job where you're working full time and then go into your associate's degree in the evenings or in the mornings. You can figure that out. I know you can. And you made a you made a big grown up decision, and you're gonna have to work real hard. Okay, this is gonna be hard the next a, couple a of years. A full time nanny might make three to four grand, right? Um, it, it it depends on the need. I I live in a um I'm I'm just nannying for for a family. I've been with them. For I know, years. I know. So. You're a babysitter. Yeah. I want you. I, I want you to people. change to a nanny and make three thousand dollars a month. Okay. 
market yourself there. And this D- family, double your income. Yeah, this family probably is your safety lifeline. Is that right? Um. Yes. Yeah. They are. I. I actually um have a boyfriend. We we're planning to get married um sometime this summer as well. So. Okay. I want you to get somebody that is an adult that you can sit down and talk about all your plans with. Because right now you're running, and I don't want you to run into a marriage you're not 100% in on. I don't want you to run into student loans just to finish. I don't want you to run into a job that's paying you half of what you're worth. Right now you're just running for your life, and I want you to run or walk to an adult, one or two or three people in your life that you can sit down and say, here's what I'm thinking, and they'll go, oh, honey, Mm -hmm. slow down. Make your school decision. Make your career decision. Make your marriage decision from strength. And John and I are saying that you're probably not feeling super strong right now. So any of those three decisions right now are really, really tenuous. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't get married. I'm not saying you shouldn't finish school. I'm not saying that, you know, that you're not going to have a career. But I think you need to get a financial strength, a sustainability, and then go, oh, from strength I'm going to decide to get married, not from weakness. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Kathleen is with us. Hey, Kathleen, how are you? Hello. I'm nervous. That's okay. We've never lost a patient. You're going to make it. That sounds good. You're going to make it. Where do you live? I live in Spring, Texas. Cool. Did you grow up there? Um, No, I'm from up north, and then I went down there. I was recruited to teach. Oh, very good. What do you teach? Um, I'm a school administrator now. Mm -hmm. I've lived in Texas for 33 years. Okay. Well, you're a Texan then. I'm a Texan. Now, once you've been there 33 years, they they, they make it official somewhere around then, I think. I guess with the three children. It's it's about 30 minutes. Once you're in, you're... Oh, 30 minutes. Yeah, they jump you in and you've got the tattoos. We know. You're in. (laughs) Okay. All right. That's it. Well, welcome. So, how much debt did you pay off? I paid off $74,400. Way to go. And how long did this take you? 17 months. Wow. Whoa. And your range of income during that time? Um. I make about a hundred thousand, and with my side hustles, I made thirty-two thousand. So Up about one hundred thirty-two. Okay, cool. What's your side hustle? Um, I started Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. I did that for a while, mm-hmm. and then I got into umpiring with mm-hmm. uh, my boyfriend. So we mm-hmm. started umpiring. We mm-hmm. do that all the time, mm-hmm. and then I had kids that moved back home, so ah. I decided that they could help pay for the mortgage. Why not? That's <laughs> a good thing. So, what do you umpire? Softball. Softball. Girl softball. What age? Um, anywhere from 6 to 16. 18. So is there anything meaner on the planet than parents of <laughs> children playing organized sports to umpires? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> that has been we a, could solve the Ukraine crisis pretty quick. That, man, was, some, some, that has been a truism since little time parents began. Overseas. Yeah, wow. If, if you're behind the plate, you take your mask off at times and just kind of stare them down. <laughs> yes. And they look at the floor, the ground, and they're like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, not necessarily. <laughs> oh, you're man. out. That's right. <laughs> Throwing them out. I love it. So what's it, like, what's it like being a, a, an administrator of a school and then hopping out of work and then going to do del- Uber Eats? Did you ever show up to the house of a student? Mm, no. no. I have made sure that I have delivered in a different area. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah, that could be that's, weird. That's that'd be humbling. Weird. That'd be weird. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's putting it all out there. Yeah. All right. So what kind of debt was the 74000 
Um, it was personal loan. I had medical loan that I paid off. Mm -hmm. Um, I had my ex-husband's student loan Mm -hmm. that I still had to pay off because Mm -hmm. I co-signed on it, which I would recommend never, ever doing. Um, he passed away, but I still paid it off. Um, and just kind of a collage. Oh, wow. So I had about 64,000, but in that time as I was Uber eating and different things like that, I had a car accident. Mm -hmm. Somebody ran into me and drove off. So I had to purchase a new car within Mm -hmm. that time. And then also, um, my youngest got married. Oh, wow. Okay. So we cash flowed 11000 Okay, wow. You covered, covered a bunch of stuff, yeah. So what inspired you to do all this 17 months ago? What was the story? What started you? Um, I met a man um, mm-hmm. that's sitting over here, and he's always been my cheerleader. Mm-hmm. Um, he's lived the Dave Ramsey baby steps um, forever, mm-hmm. and he just kept on encouraging me, you know, that this is the way we do it. We would go do things or go places and we always listen to the Ramsey show and Mm. all the time and he just told me once he said you know hey send me your finances you know through email let's set up a payoff quote and everything you know a a program for you Mm -hmm. and I was like no I don't talk about finances I don't want to talk about finances because I didn't think it was ever possible even though you hear all these people say it I just Mm -hmm. didn't think it was possible and I said okay well here's my finances and I walked out the door and he's like you don't want to talk about it I'm like no but um, finally, he called me that evening, and we talked about it. He showed me how it was possible and how I would start with the snowball effect and how I would pay a little bit on one, and then I would pay that off, and then i add that to another one. And he had a spreadsheet all made for me of my income and what I would pay off and how I could do it. And I mean, you were spoon-fed. He was. This is straight I was up. Spoon-fed. I mean, he just did it for you. This is he, awesome. Yes, and he yet, did all And of 17 it. months later, you're free of something you didn't think was possible. Correct. Wow. But my paychecks would come in from Uber Eats on Tuesdays, like I would never take the cash out on it. Yeah. So in Mondays, I would take my money from softball and I would go deposit it in the bank. Mm-hmm. So I would make one payment on Mondays mm-hmm. from softball and then I make my Tuesday payments for my Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. So if I didn't have softball on the weekend, then I was doing Uber Eats. Um, I wow. did either Uber Eats or I did league ball softball during the week. How far into the 17 months did you want go? Oh, wait a minute, this is going to work. Mm, I would say it took about six months, honestly. Really? Because, I mean, I kept on thinking, I got some things paid off, but I don't know. The smaller ones, I thought, well, okay, so well, just, that was just 1500 you just trusted him to put the system in place, and then you trusted his he systematizing. He was a huge cheerleader for me. Yeah. Just a huge motivator yeah. and cheerleader. Because you weren't sure it was going to work. In six months, you did it anyway. I kept on doing it. I enjoyed what I was doing. I'm being an administrator. I mean, I'm not in the classroom anymore. So really being out there on the ball field with the girls and everything like that, I mean, that's tr- turned into be a passion for me. I yeah. mean, just being with them and stuff. Not the parents, but the girls. <laughs> and <laughs> Somebody's got to care for those kids. Right? And so that's been really fun, just being out there and doing it. So I would say maybe five to six months. But um, when I got the biggest, when I got my car paid off, I think that's when I was just like, oh my gosh, I got that paid off. Mm. And that was the biggest one. I remember that was in January. Mm. How long has it been since you were completely debt free? How many years ago? Too many. Like when you started your working life, probably, huh? Probably. Probably had debt your whole adult life. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. What kind of freedom um, did you experience when you paid off that student loan? Because that that that's that's wrapped up into some other feelings, into some other into loss, and all that. there had to have been a cathartic moment of goodbye. It was. It was pretty unreal, and um, it's really weird. But the month I did it was also the month that my youngest got married. Uh. And so um, my um, ex mother in law was here, and you know, and I told her, and I mean, so it was really. Um, rejoicing yeah. you know i have to give her a shout out she told me she said um kathy said you know um i told you all about dave ramsey 30 years ago and you never listened to me and yada 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 oh <laughs> uh, what a mother-in-law i told you so i told you so what an ex-mother-in-law <laughs> oh, that's right yeah. but um you know she was there for the wedding that's and awesome. just all that so yeah um, it. it was a big release and it mm-hmm. was a big accomplishment now i just hope my kids follow in my footsteps and they learn before i did yeah amen Amen. Way to go. I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. Good work. Good work. Very well done. Okay, now when you back up and you look at the whole process, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? 
having that budget, having that budget and sticking to it. And then when you do your side hustles, um, really making sure you're taking that money and you're putting it towards your debt. So Mm -hmm. you're putting that towards whatever you're paying off at the time. I think that was the biggest thing of just any extra money I had, then you just put it towards that debt. That speeds everything up substantially. Very much so. Incredible. 17 months later, she's free. Just like that. Boom. Changes everything. Everything. You don't meet a lot of really great Longhorns, man, but this guy's done all right. He's decked out, Dave. He's decked out in all his gear. He went to the wrong Texas college, but I applaud him. He did a good job. He did a good so, job. Uh, He's done a wonderful job. Now that you're free, how's it feel? It feels fantastic. Um, I've saved money, so I've started on you know building up my next step uh-huh. and um, my financial security. Um, but I've also taken some of the money to do some fixes on the house that I needed to do, just Mm -hmm. kind of making sure that everything is working order. Good for you. Well done. It's been wonderful. Well done. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. We want that to be the next chapter in your story. Go on and be a millionaire now. Thank you. You're on your way. Thank you. You're on your way. How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth and How You Can Too. Also a copy of the Total Money Makeover book that uh, 8 million people have now read. You can give that to one of your kids, maybe. Maybe get them, the one that just got married. Maybe get them moving in the right direction. Will do. So good stuff. All right, it's Kathleen from Spring, Texas. 74000 paid off in 17 months, making 100 to 132 with the side hustles. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free. Yeah. <laughs> This is The Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. John's new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, is on pre-sale. The not-so-complicated approach to relationships, mental health, and wellness. Dealing with all kinds of trauma, getting connected to a community, change your thoughts and actions. So here's the thing, John, that that we're experiencing with the sale of the book. The book is selling like hotcakes, by the way. And if you want to pre-order the book, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, you can get it for $20. And what comes with it is pretty incredible. A month of weekly one-on-one therapy through our partners at Better Health is included. That's an unbelievable deal. Uh, the Better Health people really believe in John, and uh, as we do. But boy, they have really stepped up and made this per- pre-order purchase the bargain of the century right now. Hey, and here's why that's important, Dave. The, for years, um, the last several years, there's been a shortage. People they get the courage up to say, "Hey, I want to go get a go get an appointment with a local counselor, um, with a local therapist," and can't get in you get put on a six-month wait list and we just we're talking about an article that came out today talking about the wait list across the country and the better help their guarantee is they'll someone will call you within 24 hours and so my fear was someone's going to close this book and say all right it's time and i got some stuff i got to deal with not everyone who reads is going to need therapy but there's time and then <laughs> guaranteed if you read this book you'll be in therapy that's right but uh, they're gonna pick <laughs> it up pass. and then go cool in eight months i'll uh i'll get yeah. back on that so man that better help deal is, well what that's it incredible. does do is it does wake you up and go there's a there's a chance that i don't have to live with the with with the mental issues I'm dealing with, that's right. I can I can get the I can get past those. I, can get and I need some help. Starting today, I yeah. need some help, and this better help thing helps you get it's it. Incredible, done. Yeah. yeah, I love so, it. Really grateful for them. The 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 whole premise of the book and um, it is just to change the story. Yeah, 
the story the the stories of our life as you wrote um good and bad are, are how we operate in our brains and uh you can be set free from some of the bad stories that keep running they're on they're on loop in our brains aren't they they're on automatic automatic response over and over and over yeah and, and you can just even just even realizing that's what's happening and it doesn't have to be this way and then you can the, the challenge there is then what do i do and that's what we walk through yeah. yeah own your past it's there we're not going to deny it it happened change your future you don't have to be what happened to you hey and i found out today uh i didn't even know this was going out today but they down they uploaded uh, so if you go to my po- normal podcast the dr john deloney show they released today as a special release the first chapter of the audiobook oh, as a yeah, podcast. The bonus. The yeah, bonus so chapter. you can go check out if you want to. If you're interested, I'm thinking about. I don't know. The first chapter of the of the audiobook's been released today on with the podcast, and so you can go check it out. Um, as read by the author. Oh yeah. You know, and this is the first audiobook that I wrote the forward, and I actually voiced the forward. Oh yeah. That was strange. That is strange. I don't know who voiced the forwards and the other ones I wrote, but it's the only one I've ever voiced. Probably so. Kelly. She did it. No one even knows. Yeah. Well, nobody reads the forward. That's why <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. But uh, all, it, all, it, all I said was it's a great book. You should read it or something like that. So uh, dash forward. Yeah. So own your past, change your future by Dr. John Deloney, the latest or the newest or the soonest, the next number one bestseller. It's not yet because it's not out yet technically, but it is on presale. You can get it at RamseySolutions.com and get yourself signed up. And uh, man, you get a lot of, you get the ebook and the audio book all as part of the package along with a month of free one-on-one weekly therapy through our partners at better help dave is with us in indianapolis hi dave welcome to the ramsey show hi thanks for taking my call sure what's up hey i just had a few quick questions so i've been saving for a home for what seems like a, a very long time um I'm 33 years old. I was just recently married last year. Um, my wife is 27, and I have a 13-year-old son. Um, we just purchased a house this year. I paid it off, um, and I have zero debt. And uh, I was just wondering, uh, what what would your next step be? I, I need a, a plan and a path for my future. Okay, so you're 100% debt-free. Yes. And your household income is what? Uh, 46. Okay. Very well done, sir. Wow, man. Very well done. Okay. There's only three things you you can do with money. You can invest it to create more money. You can give it Mm -hmm. in generosity. And you can enjoy it. You should always do all three. And you can decide the percentages because you have done an incredible job and have set yourself up to win. But I would not recommend giving all of your income away, but I would always give some of it. I would not recommend investing all of your income, but I would always invest some of it. And I would not recommend consuming or enjoying all of your income, but I would consume and enjoy some of it. So what are you going to do with it? Uh, Well, I did purchase a house. It's not my dream home. It needs a lot of fixing. Um, The one you're living in? Yes. Okay. Oh, so you got so you, you're gonna have to spend some money on the house. Yes. How much? I have no idea. Probably at least ten or fifteen thousand. Okay. Well, just put that in your budget, man. Okay. That, that's your new. That's one of your new payments. You pay yourself for the renovation. Okay. I just paid it off last week, so uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, man. Absolutely, and and, and you're, that's that's part of your enjoyment money. And then part of your money mm-hmm. is investing, and part of your money is generosity. And just keep on, man. You're doing a great job. Very well done. Wow. Yeah, and, and man, I, I, I've i heard this call more often than I would have thought, where someone crosses a major milestone, and they kind of have this moment of feeling untethered. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I just let the ski rope go, and I'm kind of all over the place. Just get a new plan. Just, just be intentional mm-hmm. about what comes next, right? Whether it's saving for your house, retirement. Give a chunk of money away. Go do something fun. Go on a vacation. You paid your house off, man. Celebrate. Um, don't let this paralyze you. Yeah, here's the thing. If you will write it down that yep. this much is going to this, this much is going to A, this much is going to B, this much is going to C, whatever it is, the simple written out formula, that's what we do with our money. All right. I just opened my mail before I came down here a while ago. I got a, I got a check from the uh, publisher. 
mm-hmm. from uh, an old book years ago. But it's a nice little check, still selling. And uh, I know I know exactly where that's going to go. Mm-hmm. I did not know that that check was coming, and I did not know exactly how much it would be if I had known it was coming, because we don't know till we get the statement in on the royalties, right? Mm-hmm. But I do know exactly what percentage of it is going to generosity. Mm-hmm. I know what percentage of it is going to enjoyment. And I know what percentage of it is going to further investing mm-hmm. and because it's all preset on every dollar that comes into the Ramsey's household these mm-hmm. days. And so um, and then that and then within each of those categories, here's how generosity looks. We do that through the foundation in our case. Um, and we tithe. We're Christians. So we give a tenth of our income to our local church. And here's how the investing looks. I'm going to buy real estate. I'm going to pay mutual funds. I got this next project I'm working on over here. I'm building up for. And over here's some enjoyment. Here's something Sharon wants to do and something we want to buy at the house or do something, you know, go on a trip or whatever. And so it's all laid out. It's all laid out. It's kind of boring. <laughs> but it's all very 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 intentional no one wins by accident right and this says, look i won how did that happen they all go it was a series of progressive incremental decisions intentional decisions that cause you to win that's right so what winning always looks like in mental health and marriage and parenting in, in business and money if we could convince the world that the path forward is boredom and consistency it's doing it over and over again We'd win. Systems. Right? Systems. Let's create a good system. You know. And just keep going. One of our buddies wrote a book that's been on the number one, on and off number one, and on and off. It's been hanging out on the bestsellers for about a year, Atomic Habits. Well, it's a couple years old now. Yeah, it's James that Clear. Just- and that's all he talks about. He says, you know, people don't win because they set goals. They win because they systematically work incremental progress, in atomic habits, small habits, a series of small habits, a series of small habits, and a constant process to take you towards your goal. And you rise and fall to the level of your system. Yep. Right? Yep. And so you can have all the goals in the world, but if your house is full of Twinkies, you don't have a gym, gym equipment, you know what I mean? It's going to be tough for you. You, you can lift Twinkies. Can you? <laughs> Into the mouth. <laughs> over and over. They- but yeah, it's about your systems, man. Set yourself up for success. Keep in mind, those Twinkies will last 500 years. In, in, which is exactly, in and out of your stomach. Which is exactly why you should not ingest That's them. Right. Yes. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money, your relationships, your mental health, your jobs, and your careers. This is The Ramsey Show. We're glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Chad is in Minneapolis. Hi, Chad. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thanks for having me on. Sure. What's up? So um, I'm in um, kind of step five slash upgrade to six. Uh, Quick backstory. I've got a $130,000 paid for home uh, with a hundred grand grand in the bank. And we'll be looking to uh, upgrade here recently or in the future. Um, I think I might've had the question, but um, my base, my salary was about 110. And then through some restructuring negotiation, um, Within my organization, I got up to 120 salary with a, I got a $30,000 bonus and a and a 12,000 car allowance. So that brings me up to about 160. Um, there's not any income restrictions on having a designated Roth 401k through my employer, is it, or is that no. through IRAs? No income restrictions, only on IRAs. 
Okay. Um, the and then and that so that sort of solves that one. My one question there is uh, because I'm I'm going to be looking to upgrade my house. You're single, um, right? I, I'm, I'm I am engaged. Um, okay. So we've got we've got six kids together. So it's a very busy household. Um, so we need we need a little more room to grow. Um, you've been you I got six a, kids and you've been too busy to get married. Uh, no, so uh, I have I have four children from a previous marriage, and oh, she has okay. two from a previous oh, I marriage. I thought you had so six are... together. You're just trying to just still feeling it out a little bit, to see if this is the one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be receiving a a check uh, from. I never took care of it through the divorce uh, of about twenty eight thousand dollars through a QDRO uh, for my ex's pension. Um, does it make sense to that? that I'm, you I'm can roll to, that. You can just roll to an IRA. Right, but does it? Is it? Is it very anti Ramsey to pay the pay the penalty, get that in cash, so I can have a larger down payment on a bigger house? It doesn't really matter if it's anti-Ramsey. It's just you're going to give the government a whole big pile of money that I wouldn't do. I mean, it's not, well, it's you're, not a Ramsey you're, thing. You're, it's you know you're going to well, you're going to give right. the government thirty thirty percent. You're borrowing extra down payment money at thirty percent interest. Right. No, but I wouldn't I give the government thirty percent of my I money. Earned that money, I would have been. I would have paid that same. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I have a pile of money. I have the opportunity to borrow money at thirty percent interest to put more on my down payment on my house. I think I'll pass. And you didn't earn it. Yeah. Like, if I got hit by a meteor, I'd probably do things differently today, but I didn't. Right. <laughs> so you didn't earn the money, and so I, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Would you take out a, a um, an additional small loan at thirty percent to down put a down payment on your house? No. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing, man. Same math. Yep. So, yeah, just roll it to a traditional, max out your Roth a 401k over at work, or up to 15%, and then save like a crazy person and finish up your down payment. Get it, get the down payment as big as you can get it. You're heading in the right direction. So I know hey. it feels like you had a pile of money coming, and it's, it's going to feel so good. It's not. It's, it's just not. not. No, no, it's, you're going to give a pile of money to the government if you do that, and we don't we don't give money to the government. It's not a Ramsey thing though. It's just a it's just a math thing, you know. It's you know it's not. Yeah, you like- stole that principle from math, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're full of one liners on this particular call. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Cubana is with us in Baton Rouge. Hey, Cubana, what's up? Hi, Ramsey. Can you hear me? Absolutely. How can we help? Oh. Okay, so my husband and I, we opened up a company back in May of 2021, and I wanted to know how can I make sure that our personal and business finances is ready for the tax season? Okay. Uh, Back in May of 2021, I would have started this. If you haven't, you're going to have to go back and do it starting now. Does the company have a separate checking account that you only do business out of? Yes, it does. Okay. If you only put business money or income into that account and you only paid business expenses out of that account and you didn't do it anywhere else, that account, the income and outgo of that account will show what your business has done because it shows your revenue and it shows your expenses and what's left is called profit. Um, it does, but uh, honestly, I never really looked at it because I didn't know what to look for. And I recently started looking at it when I found um, I found you on YouTube, I think, or maybe it was an influence on Instagram, I'm not sure. But I started looking and I was getting a little insecure about the members because um, I know we have an audit coming up in May for the company, um, what is it called, Workers' Comp. Oh, a, a workers comp audit. Fast agency. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be freaked out about it. Jump online at RamseySolutions.com and click on uh, ELP. It stands for Endorsed Local Provider. Find a tax person there in Baton Rouge that we endorse. They probably also do small business bookkeeping, and you'll be able to pay them a fee to untangle your barrel of fish hooks. So basically, you got like three ski ropes all wrapped together and twisted up. And that's all of your numbers, but they're all there. They're all in the barrel 
We just got to get them out and untangle them and show your proper income, your proper expenses, and your proper profit. And um, that'll also help you get your taxes ready for 2022. And it'll set you up perfectly for your workers' comp audit. So you can know what to pay properly on the workers' comp. It should, if you have all your expenses in there, in that account or anywhere where you can get your hands on them, then you can you can go back and develop a profit and loss statement for the six months of 2021, and that's really what needs to happen. And a bookkeeper can help you do that. This is it's really sixth grade math and organization is all it is. It's not a it's not a super difficult uh, intellectual exercise. Anybody can do it. Uh, it's just a matter of you got to get all the expenses for each month, categorize them by category, all the income for each month, categorize it by category. The difference in the two is your profit. And uh, if you do that six times for six months, you have your you have your your income statement or your profit and loss statement for the year 2021 since you opened in June around June 1st of 2021, and you'll be there. Uh, but if you need some help, you can pay somebody a few hundred dollars if you if it's if the company's making money to do it for you. I personally can't stand to do that kind of stuff. It drives me nuts. So it's one of the first things I'd pay somebody else to do. <laughs> but uh, but I know how to do it. I just don't want to do it. And just lazy in that way. I don't want. It's just ugh. It's a. Uh, it's ugh. Yeah. But if you want to, <laughs> if you want to do it, we have people that we can hook you up to do the ugh. Right. That's how it works. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. like January 1st is two years ago. How are your resolutions going? If you're like most people, you hit it hard in January, and by Valentine's Day, they were done. Well, you can reach all of your money goals this year, but it takes accountability. It takes intentionality. It takes a plan to get them done. And you get all of this by joining a Financial Peace University class. You'll go through our proven money plan with other people who will help you stay motivated. They'll hold you accountable. They'll encourage you because they're trying to get out of debt and build wealth just like you are. Financial Peace University classes are both in person and they're online. There's no excuse not to give this a try. You can get back on track with your money goals. Almost 10 million people have been through this class and have had successful results, not only getting out of debt, but many of them have gone on to become Baby Steps millionaires following the Baby Steps. That's where we wrote the number one best-selling book from. So get started for free, a free trial for Financial Peace University at RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. That's RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Adam is with us in Atlanta. Hi, Adam. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's up? So I'm... Uh... I've made some pretty pretty dumb mistakes, and I'm uh, I'm pretty terrified of making some more. So I was hoping I could get some advice on, uh, I guess, how I can move forward with getting a house. Um, I've got some car debt from some pretty stupid mistakes, um, been there, done that, trying to get rid of it now. Um, I've got about twenty thousand dollars in savings um, that I could either use to dump into the car debt and try and get rid of it as fast as possible. Um, or do I try and keep building off of that to get enough for a down payment for the house? Cool. Uh, good. That's a good question. It's a valid question. How old are you? 
Uh, I am 29. Okay. And you're fairly new to this whole Ramsey stuff, right? Um, I've been around it a lot, but pretty much ignored it most of my life. Okay. But, uh, no, that means you're new to it. Trying to, okay. trying to, that's trying, that's trying to get started now. That's okay. That's okay. It's all good. And um, what do you make a year? Uh, I'm right around 105000 a year. Good for you. And you're single? I am. Okay. What do you owe on the car? Uh, right around 38000 Okay. Is that your only debt? Um, I kicked my student loans to the curb uh, last month. They are gone now. Way to go. Uh, yeah, the car's it. The car's okay. it. All right. Well, there's two ways to go at this, okay? The fast way to get a house is dump the car and get you a cheap, okay. car, get you a cheap car and pay cash for it. The slow right. way to get a house is get the car paid off and then save up your down payment. I tell people, and, and, and there's a reason for this. I don't just, it's not just because... Uh, I don't want people to, here, here's the thing. I want you own a house. I grew up in the real estate business. I love real estate. I think owning real estate is an essential part of building wealth long term. So I do want you to get a house. I just don't want the house to get you. And when you have a $38,000 right. car debt, uh, you don't need a house till you get that mess cleaned up, okay? Because you're, it's going to bite you in the butt. Uh, so I want you to have, here's the thing. You move into a house with a car debt and no money, and you put all your money down on the house, as soon as you do, something's going to break on the house. The roof's going to leak. Yep. Just They're Murphy's Law. That. Okay. But if you move into a house with no car debt and an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses and put your down payment down, and you got so you got money in the bank, no debt when you move in, nothing will happen to this house. It'll be perfect. You'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how life works, man. What kind of car is it? Uh, it's, a, it's a late model Kia. It's a couple years old. What could you get for it right now? Probably more than I paid for it. Probably more than 38. I could probably get around 45, according to Kelly Blue Book. Brother, sell it yesterday. Do you love this car? Has it wormed its way into your heart? Um, I do like it, but I don't know if I like it that much. Yeah. So here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'd sell it. What I just told you was the best way, the only way I would tell you to buy a house, and I do want you to, to buy a house, is when you have no debt and have an emergency fund plus your down payment. Okay. Gotcha. So the two ways to get there are quickly dump the car, buy a seven thousand dollar car for cash. You have no debt. Build your emergency fund, then build your down payment, and then buy you a house. That's going to happen very quick. You have a house by Christmas, or pay this car off, keep it, build your emergency fund, build your down payment, and you'll have a house by the next Christmas, or the one after that. Either one's okay. There's nothing dumb here because the car is not completely out of control given your income. It's getting close, but it's not completely out of control. The, the, if you want to know what out of control is, you don't own things with wheels and motors all totaled up to be equal more than half your annual income. <laughs> and you're not there. Fair enough. Unless you got other it's things close. with wheels yeah. or motors that we don't know about. No, sir. But if this is no, the only sir. one you got, it's below half your annual income. So it's keeper. It's okay. But you need to get it paid off before you buy a house. So, or the stars have aligned, and you can get rid of this thing. You can have seven thousand bucks. You can walk over to the lot and buy a beater, and seven thousand is even not a beater, a beater. right? A, a sustainable car. Yeah. And man, now you're talking. You're debt free. You got twenty grand in the bank. You are well on your way now. You could buy George Camel's Honda for less than seven thousand. You could buy that for about a dollar forty-five. <laughs> have you seen that thing? He starts it with a rope out in the parking lot, Dave. A rope. It's ridiculous. <laughs> A rope. I drive just to spin the propeller I, to get it to stop. I drive bad cars, and that car makes me go, come on, man. <laughs> George is truly not a car guy. I've been giving him a hard time on the air about his car. So, yeah, you can go either way, Adam. Uh, personally, I like cars. I'm a car guy. Uh, but I like houses more because <laughs> they go up in value. Uh, and until recently, cars have never gone up in value, and they won't long term, but recently they have been. Uh, so I, I personally would dump the stupid thing while the getting's good and get me a house and then move up in car with cash later after I get my house. But it's not a big deal either way. You're, you're not in the dumb column either direction. Okay? I compared that with what you and I have done before. You're, you're nowhere near us, Adam. Yeah, yeah, you you got us both of us beat. I mean, in in you're a lot, lot smarter than we were. So, all right, Nathan's in Birmingham. Hey, Nathan, what's up? Hey, Dave. Uh, quick question for you about long-term disability. 
Uh, I just switched jobs, got a new job, and uh, looking at uh, purchasing it. Uh, question is, do I go through my employer or do I go kind of the, the personal route uh, and, and get my own long-term disability and, and keep it with me? Uh, you know, if I were to switch jobs in the future, et cetera. Yeah, you can get you can get it most anywhere. I, I would get it through your employer just because you're going to find it to be about it's probably 25 percent, probably 75 percent cheaper than in the open oh, market. Okay. A group policy on on long term disability is just it's one of the best buys out there. It's very inexpensive. It, I'll tell you how inexpensive it is. It's it's the only kind of insurance at Ramsey that I pay a hundred percent of as the employer. We furnish mm-hmm. it as a benefit. It just doesn't cost me much to give it to everybody. It, nothing like health insurance, for sure. And so, um, you know, we, we pay a, almost all the health insurance, but not all of it. We want everybody to have a little skin in the game on that. But this stuff just doesn't cost much. But if you go buy it as an individual policy, I bet you're going to find it's 4X. Okay. I, I may be, it may be 3X, but, I mean, somewhere in there, it's a lot more. So buy it through your employer. And here's the other thing. If you will buy it with after-tax dollars – after your check has gotten the taxes out of it, not before tax dollars, that's what I would do. Because then if you become disabled, your disability income is not taxable. Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't know that. If you buy it with pre-tax dollars, your disability income is taxable. And uh, it's a big difference. Big difference. I had no idea they would tax your disability, disability income. benefits. Yeah. Man, they will take it all. It tax everything, man. Yeah, tax man. everything. So, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. But still, especially if you're in uh, this cost uh, issue, will be better. Especially if you're in some kind of an industry where um, you 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 know you're not just driving a. If you're driving, if you're just driving a desk, that's you know you, it's just white collared. Cat, the category of work you do dictates the cost of long-term disability more than your age or health. What about those little twelve dollar a month, dollar a month to buy the three three months? Oh, yeah. that's awful. Is it bad? Awful. Okay. Yeah, stay away from that stuff. Yeah, that's just gimmick stuff. You need an emergency fund to cover that junk. So that, that's all you need. Cover that. Yeah, self-insure through that. It's the long-term disability that's the problem. This is the Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper. Jumpstart your CFO career. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Debbie, Austin, Kate, and Allison are with us. Hey, guys. How are you? We're great, Dave. Welcome. Where do you live? We live in northwest Indiana, just um, outside of Chicago, Illinois. Oh, okay. Cool. Welcome to Nashville. Thank you. And all the way here to do a debt-free scream. Yes. Very fun. How much did you pay off? $168,000 in 12 years. 
but our journey actually started in 09, mm-hmm. or actually, no, 07, um, when we paid off $40,000 in two years. Mm-hmm. And that was credit cards, um, student loans, all the stupid things that um, my husband and I did. Mm-hmm. So when you put the two together, that's our total. Okay. All right. And yeah, okay, I got you. And your house range of household income, I don't know, through the 12 years maybe? Yes. Uh, we started at 100 and um, just doubled. Okay. All right. What do you do for a living? I work um, at a church. Um, I'm a children's ministry director. Mm-hmm. Very good. And what was the 168000 Um, The mortgage. Oh, that was oh. the... Oh. Yeah. Oh, look at the, she's rolling out the spreadsheet. What? Whoa, whoa. Covered the whole refrigerator. Yes, it did. Wow. I love it. Wow. That's, that is a spreadsheet of all spreadsheets. So that's the 12 years of marking it out. Yeah. Okay. So 09, you guys run into us, I guess. In 07, we ran into you. Okay. And then two years later, we you paid off. You were debt-free, but, we the were, house, but the house. And then 12 years more, the house is paid off. Correct. Very good. What's the house worth? Um, I believe the house is worth $350,000 now. Cool, cool. And how much do you have in investments? Um, well, my husband recently passed away. Oh, my. Um, five months ago. Oh, my. So that's the part of the story then, a big yep, part of the this story. this is a big part of our story. Okay. Well, tell me the whole thing. Let me back up. Yeah, I'll let you start and you tell the story. Okay. Um, so Ryan, my husband, uh, loved to spend money. Mm-hmm. And so his mentality was just to charge it. And so um, when we found you in 07, he was a deacon at our church. Mm-hmm. And they asked him They asked him to find something um, to get us to help people in our church to uh, do our finances. Mm -hmm. And he came across your program and he listened to it in two days and he came home and he said, honey, we're we're cutting up our credit cards and we're going to get out of debt. And you're like, who are you and what have you done with my husband? (laughs) I was. (laughs) Because it was something that I always wanted, but um, just wasn't able to get um, both of us on board at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went through it. We, he delivered pizzas. I watched 10 kids in my home. Um, the kids picked up cans in the ditches. Like everything we paid to, to, towards that forty thousand dollars went off um, to the forty thousand dollars. So then after that, um, we kind of slowed our lives down because we were we had three kids and we were really busy. And during that time, uh, Ryan found the job that he was currently at Milwaukee Valve, and so he was uh, working more and had a goal in mind and wanted to get to that goal. And so we kind of slowed things down. And so then over the over the twelve years, um, we put to, um, we co- colored off our lines as much as we could. Mm-hmm. We did cash flow um, Christian education. Um, mm-hmm. My kids all went to Christian school. Mm-hmm. Um, Austin just will be graduating in May uh, with a degree in business and wow. we cash flowed his um, first or for his four years of college. Mm-hmm. Allison or Allison's in high school and Kate is a freshman at Florida Gulf Coast University studying marine science. Yay. So um, with all of that, uh, we cash flowed $300,000 yeah. in tuition. Wow. So, um, so yeah. what happened? What, what kind of illness did he have? Um, he had a blood clot to the heart. So no warning. Mm-mm. No, it was a complete and utter shock. He uh. passed on September 22nd. Oh my. And uh, how old he, was he? 46. Oh Lord. Yeah. 46. Oh my gosh. So I am, my family and I are, I would be in a completely different situation today had Dave Ramsey not crossed my husband's path wow. 15 years ago because I know that I would not be financially secure where I am today. I know I would be selling my home. I'd be getting a full-time job. Wow. And I don't yeah. because no, he had, had everything in place and I am completely taken care of. What a good man. Yeah. He was the best. Oh, my gosh. So, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, God is good. He is providing for us. He is been amazing um I, I just can't speak enough about our lord yeah and uh but the suddenness of this tragedy it's uh, that's what gets you yes uh, i mean it always gets you but the suddenness of this and as young as he was amazing and yes. he was a great dad and great husband to boot oh my gosh yeah. his dream was to come here when we saw um paid off the house and so we're 
that uh, picture I just saw in the corner over there, that is a car, that is a truck I drove. Um, mm-hmm. It was a 2002 uh, Yukon XL. And uh, we she got... sees the truck. Yeah. We see the husband. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> There's the truck. <laughs> so the for those of you watching photo. on YouTube, you saw the photo. The yeah. real heartache in that photo is that truck, right? <laughs> he always uh, said, honey, that truck's going to make us rich one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good line. Hey, just, just so you know, Debbie, he's here with you. Yes. He's here. He is. He's here with all of us. Absolutely. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, and Austin's got the headset on, the second headset. So yes. Austin, you were in college when all this was going on, right? Yeah. So he was sick for about two weeks. Mm. And, uh, I mean, me and him would talk on the phone every day mm-hmm. oh, so for like 40 minutes every day. And uh, for two weeks, he just wouldn't pick up his phone. Mm. And it was pretty hard. But then the day before he passed, he felt better. And we talked on the phone. And I was like starting to apply for jobs and stuff like that and he just said he was proud and then mm-hmm. the next day he was gone. He's gone those are the three most important words a father can say to his son is i'm proud of you mm. i'm so glad you got to hear that man what a gift yeah. he said that to his kids a lot yeah. oh gosh what a great man what well, a great man it looks to me like he had good reason to be proud absolutely <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. you guys are studs you're amazing yeah. thank you very cool well paying off the house and all that stuff really doesn't matter um, in the light of all of this, except that it gives you uh, a, a comfortable, uh, safe place to grieve this extreme loss. Uh, I mean, God, if you had payments and stuff coming out your ears and everything else, it would be a whole different world for you. Yes. And so it's a horrible thing that you guys have gone through, but, um, but the, best of, the best possible way to go through a horrible thing. You know, I guess is the only way I know how to say it. And there's oh nothing gosh. cooler than, you know, people say the words, I love you a lot. I'm proud of you a lot. And right now, y'all are living what love looks like, what love, love with feet and hands on it, right? Which is a plan um, that he worked at in the middle of the night. Probably y'all were sleeping to make sure that things well, were going to be okay. look at that spreadsheet. That's unbelievable. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that one. But <laughs> it's unbelievable. There's man. the insurances and the stuff. They're just beautiful, man. I, I love, love this guy. I was in the office. Next to, he had it on the wall, get up, leave the cave, kill something, drag it home (laughs) with the mortgage principal right next to it. I love this guy. He was a huge, huge Dave Ramsey fan. He would listen to uh, your podcast every day. Um, It didn't matter where we were. Um, It was always on. Mm. What a legacy. Talk about change your family tree, man. Yes, he did. Wow. Yes, well, he did. Thank you guys for coming to share. And it's a painful thing for you to have to share. Um, but uh, what a wonderful way to honor the work your whole family has done, but certainly the uh, the leadership that he brought to your family on this subject is pretty incredible and set you guys up to win. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, I think my allergies are acting up, John. Yeah. <laughs> There's dust in here, man. There's yeah. dust in here. I'm not crying. You're crying. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. You're, we're so proud of you. Thank you. Very well done. Well, we've got a copy of uh, Baby Steps Millionaires for you. Uh, if you're not already, you will be. You've got the, uh, the table set and uh, the next chapter. Uh, it wasn't the way you wrote the book. wasn't the way you were going to write it, but uh, the next chapter is here, and uh, you guys are all set up to... Go on and, and move to what God's got for you next. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Count it down. Let's hear a great debt free scream. Three, mm-hmm. two, yeah. one. We're, We're debt free! free! Wow. Unbelievable. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. This is the Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Winston Churchill said, truth is incontrovertible. Panic may resent it. Ignorance may deride it. Malice may distort it. But there it is. I have never heard that quote from him. I haven't either. I love it. Fabulous quote. I love it. Fabulous quote. All right. We went out and... we got to take a minute after that. Met with Debbie and the kids after during the commercial break. Almost didn't make it back in uh, because of the hugs and... Oh, my gosh. What a um, poignant thing. Oh, my gosh. The, how often I've heard that question asked. Um, when somebody actually sets everything up to take care of their, their family, I, I hear that question with some regularity over the years. It's almost as if they knew. Yeah. Well, we do know. That's right. I love your answer. So we her, her, her in-laws ask her, because he, her husband had everything set up, the wills and everything was set up. Uh, so what happened, her, her in-laws said, well, did he know he was going to pass? Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we all know we're going to pass. Yes. That's why we do this. We, you can choose you to know, love we, your family we, or not. We, put our, we get our act together. Oh, my yeah. goodness gracious. Beautiful. So, um, What three incredible young young men and women, their yeah, kids. Their kids wow. are powerful. What a great, what a great... Uh, <laughs> Legacy. All right, Alan is in Chicago. Hey, Alan, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave, how are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? I got a career question for you. We're, I'm a driver trainer for a small mom and pop owned trucking company. Make about ninety three thousand a year. I got an offer at a bigger, more corporate trucking company, and the new job would be about six dollars more an hour, but they're not guaranteed overtime. And the job I'm at now, I'm guaranteed. 20 to 25 so i'm working about translate all of that into annual income what are you going to make at the new place annually and what did you make at the at the current place annually 93 annually at the current place the new place they're not guaranteeing me overtime there's some available i I know what do you think you'll make about 70 why would you go down well it'd be 15 hours less a week so I'd, I'd get have more home time, I guess. How many hours are you working? Sixty-five now. Okay. Will mom and papa let you? Uh, mom and pop operation let you adjust down? Could uh, yes, probably would. I, I, I would like the income though. That's the only thing I, I'd like the income. I don't mind the babysitter seven, no kids, anything of that nature. So the hours aren't really bothering me. I guess the okay, hours income, aren't bothering you. Make more money. Why would you take less hours and work less then? Because I figured the bigger the bigger company, the corporate company, would have probably more um, uh, future opportunities, I guess. Well, they have to be a lot because you're taking a thirty percent pay cut. And there's something it's about true. there's something about going from a small organization where you're kind of the big dog, you're a leader, to man, you will be a expendable number at a big giant corporation. Yeah, and that's kind of, I guess, where I wanted your guys' advice on it at. I, I think that the new job obviously would have more an hour, but less hours. They weren't guaranteed the overtime there. Yeah, but, but, the, I, but I, you're going to make less money. And you true, told me money yes. was important to you, and hours didn't bother you. True, true. So and if why you were, would you go make less money and work for a big company? No. Yeah, if you were a burned-out father with a couple of young kids and you're like man i'm working 90 hours a week i miss my family i I got this other off ramp well then that's a different discussion but i wouldn't want you to describe yeah i'd stay where you are man jennifer's in new york city hi jennifer welcome to the ramsey show hi thank you what's up so i was calling for some advice um my mom's husband just passed a month ago and they had nothing planned no will no advance directive. So my brother and I um, are trying to take this as a learning experience. And I did print out, well, how um, advanced directive, and I'm planning on speaking to her um, about it. And I just want to see where I should, any advice where to go from here. She also is a hoarder. And I have my own family and my own, um, I'm very busy, so I'm just trying to navigate. So what is your question? Um, some help what, do, for, what, what do you want? What do you, what, how can we help Just, you? Um, Just some advice of how to speak to her about this next chapter of her life and what advice you'd have for speaking to her about what to do with all of her stuff and um, basically, yeah. 
And you mean, you mean in terms of what to do, in terms of her getting a will done? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Trying to get her to put something on paper, something concrete, so okay. we don't have another nightmare. Yeah. Well, that's the way I would approach it. It's mom. It would be a gift to me and to my brother yeah. if you had a will, even if you leave it all to someone else. I don't need the money. But if you would just yeah. make it make it easier to deal with upon your death what you want done by having a will, it would be a gift to us. And if you want some help yeah. getting all that done, Jennifer, just go to MamaBearLegalForms.com, MamaBearLegalForms.com, and you can get a downloadable will very inexpensively, and she can you can you can help her for thirty minutes to an hour. She can get it all filled out, and she'd have a will. Um, but yeah. you know, th- but then she has the right to. You know, if you make it easy for her to do by coaching her, holding her hand and getting her to sign it, not but not because she thinks you want her money or you want her dead or something weird like that, but just because Mm -hmm. you want her to you want to be able to make sure her wishes are fulfilled and you're asking her to give you the gift of clarity and legal clarity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds like your mom has struggled with. She's got, does she have mental health challenges? She's a hoarder. She's got stuff going on in her heart and mind. Okay. Yeah. So have some space in your, in in reality, have some space in your heart that this conversation may not go well, that she may accuse you of all kinds of things, get mad at you and not want to think about her own death or letting go of her stuff. And know that that's stuff that she's struggling with. That's not on you. Okay. You're the responsible thing is to have this hard conversation with dignity and respect. But if it doesn't go well, it doesn't go well. You know what I mean? And it's not worth going to war with um, a, a mom who's not well. But it yeah. is worth having that conversation. I, you know, you ask and you hold the the subject lightly. Mm-hmm. Don't let your relationship with her hinge on whether she does this or not. Okay. And maybe tell her that you, hopefully you are, um, you and your home, y'all are getting your wills all taken care of and your brother's getting his all taken care of. This is just, Hey, the family learned a hard lesson with your husband passing and and we're going to make sure this doesn't happen. We've got it all set up and we'd love to have this conversation with you. Yeah, that's, that's a big deal. And the big thing is this, it's very hard for any parent to take instruction regardless of their age from their children. Yeah. We call it the powdered butt syndrome. Once someone has powdered your butt, they don't (laughs) want your opinion on sex or money. (laughs) <laughs> okay. And yeah. so it's, it's hard. It doesn't even, even though she, you may be, you might be an estate planning attorney. Doesn't matter. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and she might have, uh, never graduated kindergarten, but it doesn't matter. She's still your mother and she still thinks she knows better than you. That's just how parenting works. Right. So, so this right. is not something she, you're going to go tell her you need to, that's not how you do this. No, 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 this no, no, is, no. Here's how you okay. can love and help me. It, 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 please give me the gift of that. Use the okay. word gift. Good, it would be a gift a to me, just like if your husband had had all this done, it would have been a gift to you and us. We wouldn't have been working through all this in the barrel of fish hooks right now. We would have instead been, um, you know, we would have been just grieving his passing. Instead, we've got to work through all these legal challenges and ownership challenges because he didn't have this done. And so it's reminding me I'm doing it for my family. Brother's doing it for his family. And it would be a gift to us if you would do it to help us with you. Even And, and mom, we don't want your money. It's not It's not about money. money. You do whatever you want to do with your money. It's your money. Yeah. It's your money. We're not here to try to get your money. That's not the that's not the agenda or your stuff. We want to honor your wishes the best we can. Yeah, we want to we want you to have your will upon your death told to us and it's called a will. That's why they call it that. <laughs> so, um it is absolutely vital. John Deloney, good show. Thank you, sir. Good show to the folks in the booth. Great work back there. I'm Dave Ramsey. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com show. 